welcome to another great day. Uh, my name is David Elo. Uh, this is Living Your Dreams, where we try to look at issues that have the tendency and capacity to truncate your glorious destiny that God has planned even before you were born. So sometime now we'll be talking about uh, we are created for a purpose, that every human being has a purpose for which he was created, that God saw a need and you and I were created to solve that need, which means everybody on earth will be remembered for two things, the problem they solve and the one they created. At the end of the day, when your assignment on earth is over, you will be remembered for two things, as I said earlier, the problems you create and the ones that you solve. So we are actually born to solve issues, which we know that the devil will use people to create. And we talk about the power of focus, we talk about power of determination, and we also talk about uh, we talk about fear. Uh, then for about four or five days now, we've been dealing with two powerful weapons that we say has a tendency to destroy the destiny of one, and which has destroyed a lot of destiny. We talked about sexual immorality, and today we want to focus now on the love for money, the love for money, the desire for wealth. Uh, I was shown uh, a video clip a few days ago, about a day, about two, three, two days ago now, of, of a place in Togo where they go for rituals with thousands and thousands. When you see that video clip, you'll be, you'll be shocked at the thousands and thousands and thousands of people who they've used for rituals. They've burned them just remaining skeleton, just remaining their skeleton. They've, they've, destroyed a lot of lives. There's some that were buried alive, some that were killed and their body were burnt, completely burnt, and all for rituals to make money. Now, it's very, very important first we start by, as I've always said, that nobody's created to fail. Failure has never been part of God's agenda for anyone. It's his desire that we succeed in whatever we do. Uh, so failure was never part of God's plan. When God made Adam and Eve in the garden, he created them to fail. And for you to understand how God operates, he created everything first before Adam was created. Adam was actually created to have rest. Adam was not created to live a life of struggle. There was the earth, the earth was made. Uh, there were fishes, there were water, there were birds, there were animals, there were trees. The vegetations were already in place uh, before Adam was created. So Adam was not created when there was no water. He was not created when there was no fish. It was not created when there was no bed, when there were no animals, where the trees were not, the trees, the flowers, and the fruits, when they were not yet functioning. It was created when everything was in place. That shows that God wants us to be comfortable. God wants us to live and live abundant life. And we can also see that in John 10, verse 10, when Jesus himself came, we're talking about God now. When Jesus himself came, the Son of God, in John 10, verse 10, he said, The thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But that he came that we may have life and have abundant life, which shows that God Himself, His own desire is that we live in abundance, that we live a fulfilled life. So if you, if there's any area of your life uh, that you are not living a fulfilled life, just understand that it's not God. It can never be God. People will tell you where well, it's an act of God. There is nothing like that. There's no nothing evil. There's an act of God for everything that God does. The Bible says it's beautiful and it's good. And so we are created to be comfortable. So if you are going through stress or pain in any, in any area of your life, in any aspect of your life, in your, your business, in whatever you are doing, I just want you to understand that it has, it's not God. God has nothing to do with it. It's never in the plan of God. But I must also understand that things are principles. Remember we said before that we are created to function and we are created to fulfill purpose. There are three things uh, that your talent or your purpose or the gift that God has placed in you, there are three things it is meant to do. <clears throat> uh, first, I want you to know first that everybody has gifts. There's nobody created without a gift. In fact, you are supposed to live by your gift. Uh, so everybody that was created has gifts. There are some that have five gifts. There are some that have two. There are some that just have one. Your gifts can be multiple. But the fact is that everyone created has gift. It is so, so vital at this very particular time, at this point, so that you, you have this clear understanding that this gift is meant for you to fulfill purpose. Your gift is to glorify God. I just want you to get that settled in your mind. That your gift is first and foremost to glorify God. Uh, so you, whatever gift that God has placed in you is an extension of His glory. It's for you to be able to glorify God. For people to see it in you and begin to say, yes, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you for this which you have deposited 
in, in, in me. And so if your gift is not glorifying God, there's an issue. People should not begin to worship you. People should begin to thank God who has given you that gift. Uh, that's, that's how important it is. And secondly, whatever God has given to you is to meet a need. It's to meet a need. There's always a need. So every day you ask yourself, Am I, have I met a need today? Uh, this week, have I met a need this week? Have I met a need this month? Have I met a need this year? Because you are created to solve a problem. So what problem have you solved? What problem have you solved? The vehicle was created to solve the need for transportation. Uh, the ship and the, the planes were created also to solve the need for transportation. But you can understand that the crisis varies. I mean, there are places that uh, the vehicle cannot get to. You can't cross the Atlantic. We thank God for ship. But also there are places that the ship cannot go. And so then they, they, they invented the plane. The Wright brothers invented the plane in 1904. And the purpose of it is to also meet a need. You know, so everything is created, like I said, the telephone is created to meet a need. You know, and, and once this need are met, it takes us to the third reason why your, the gift was given to you. People will pay for your gift. People will pay for the need. They, you, you, they have the need, you have the solution. And so what happens is that when you meet their need, they pay. They pay for the need. So the, the person that invented the phone definitely has become a billionaire. I mean, we looked at a young man who invented the Facebook. Uh, it's running into billions now because he's meeting a need. Uh, communications and the people are beginning to uh, build more relationship, more friendship. Friendship, they begin to get uh, in contact, even with lost friends. There are people you've not seen for five years, for ten years, that through the Facebook you are able to get in contact with them. So the Facebook is also there to solve a need. You know, so but this need will be paid for. This need will be paid for. I, I don't want to begin to celebrate poverty. It has nothing to do with God. You know, if anybody is going through any form of poverty, just know that it has nothing to do with God. There is nothing that God wants to teach you by being poor. It is nothing. It doesn't make sense. For example, if the son of Bill Gates cannot pay, cannot pay school fees, it doesn't make sense. There's, there's an issue. Or, or even the richest African or the richest man in Nigeria today, uh, say the daughter or the son of Dangote uh, could not pay school fees. He has issue with paying the house rent. <laughs> they will know that there's an issue. You know, so uh, poverty has nothing to do with God. God wants us to be wealthy. But like I always say, there are, there are steps and principles. There are ways that things are done. And except you have a clear understanding of how these things are done, if you go outside the way it's supposed to be done, and you have violated the process, you'll be destroyed. You will definitely be destroyed. You have set up yourself for destruction. The problem we have today is that quite a number of people want to be rich, but they don't want to follow the process. They want to follow the process. That's why the Bible says the love of money, not money himself. Money is good. Money is powerful. The Bible says, the Bible himself says that money you know, meets, solves a lot of things. There are issues that money solve. If there are many people that are dead today, the reason why they are dead is because they could not get good medical care because there's no cash. There are people who are dead of hunger, all kinds of sickness and disease. There are people who are malnourished. There are people who are going through one issue or the other today. There are those who have died of sickness, of hypertension, and all kinds of disease because of the neighborhood they find themselves, because of the kind of food they eat, because of the kind of places they stay. And these things are, come from result of poverty. So poverty has nothing to do with, with glorifying God. But you see, God wants us to be blessed. He said that which above all things, above all things, which means it is a priority in the heart of God for us to be blessed. If he says in this word, in third John, verse 1, that a which above all things that will prosper and live in health, even as our soul prospers. So God wants us to prosper in the three dimension of human being. You must understand that human being, we are made up of spirit, soul, and body. The human being, we are made up of spirit, soul, and body. And God wants us to prosper in these three departments of our life. We are actually a spirit. Every human being is a spirit that has a body, that has a soul, that has a soul rather that dwells in the body. So what we call body right now is a house that has the real human being. I remember we were having a program once on relationship, and I asked a question. That people marry the container without knowing the content. The content is the real person, not the container. The content is the real person. That's why when the body drops dead, the real person moves out, which is the spirit. So I, I, at, this, at this point in time, we must understand, like I said, that God wants us to be blessed in our soul, in our spirit, in our body, which means he wants us to be healthy, he wants us to have a healthy mind, and he wants us to be blessed financially. Financially. We're looking at a lot of money. But unfortunately today, we have, we have gotten to a stage where people's desire for money without following the normal process, is beginning to cause a lot of havoc. Souls have been destroyed, lives have been destroyed. 
Families have been destroyed, completely destabilized. Why? Because of love for money. The other day, somebody gave shoot, was telling me about about how one way or the other. I don't know how he was able to. I remember when this whole Dubai thing started initially? I think it should be the the, the, the it started some few years ago, and uh, this this man's wife they belong to a church, Pentecostal church. The man's wife was always going to Dubai for business and the rest, bringing goods, bringing goods and the rest. You know that's what she was doing. It was into the Dubai business. I think later after the film they called it Dubai runs or something. But this person that stays in Lagos, the wife was involved in it, and uh, I don't know what happened. The wife, the phone was always locked. Her phone was always locked, 24 hours. Uh, you can't access the phone. But one day I don't know what happened because um, all of a sudden the wife, the husband was able to open the phone, and, and what he saw in the phone marvelled him. The guy found out that the wife travels to Dubai, not to buy and sell, but for prostitution. They are church members. The love for money. The love for money has gone, have destroyed many homes. Have even penetrated into the church system and has made a havoc of the church system. A pastor called me once, was discussing with me, the pastor of one of the big, the biggest church in Nigeria today, one of the pastors that pastor one of the parishes, came to me once and we were discussing. And, she, and he told me of his experience in his own parish where he was a pastor. How the women leader in the, in the parish took, took a young lady that just got married, extremely pretty lady, belonged to the same church, and took her and said they, they have business they are doing, they, you know. And this, lady, this young lady that just got married was so happy, <laughs> thinking that the mommy and the Lord want to introduce her into business. So he moved with her and they, would, they, would, they, would, they drove straight to Charlotte you know, a Hotel in Lagos. She, then she didn't even understand, she didn't even bother to think, because her mind was that maybe they are going for one business connection. And they drove, or the person himself was telling me, they drove straight and they found themselves in the hotel. They climbed up, this young lady did not even suspect anything yet. Uh, they climbed up, they went straight to the room, and when they got there, they saw two ladies also there. Now, even with the two ladies in this executive suit, they still did not feel anything, because as far as she was concerned, it's a mommy in the Lord. And before she knows what is happening, she discovered that one of the ladies just came and sat with her and began to say, oh, you're looking so pretty. I didn't know you were as pretty as this. You told me a lot of things about you. I started touching the sensitive part of her body. That's when she knew that, uh, as we used to say in Lagos, yeah, she has entered one chance. She discovered that she was lesbian. She said, we are going to take care of you. Any amount you want, we are going to give to you. The love of money that even a woman leader in the church recruits girls to give to lesbians rich lesbians in the street, the love of money. That's what the Bible wants, that the love of money is the root of all evil, the root of, of evil. Like I said, God wants you to be blessed by your talent. But if you make up your mind that you want to live a life of prostitution, you make up your mind that you want to live a life of evil, then of course you are going to get the money, but you won't get, you're not going to live long. You're not going to live long. At the end of the day, you will end up in hell. Like the Bible says, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and live his life, his entire life, when he dies in hell, a place of eternal punishment, because hell is real. Don't allow anybody to deceive you. Heaven is real. Hell is real. So what shall he permit a man if he gets the whole world and loses his soul? The other day I was watching one of the big, the first private TV station in Nigeria today. I was watching there during the, in the news and they showed me, and we saw a young man, it's not up to 20 years, who used his mother for ritual. He wanted to use the mother for rituals. He killed the mother and slept with her corpse. So that's the instruction that the ritualist gave. Money did not have, the mother is dead. The love of money is destroying our use today. And unfortunately, even those in government are, not, are, are making it worse by the atrocities that is taking place. People that are elected into government offices to be able to, 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 to provide services to the generality of the, of the population have decided to sit upon the commonwealth of the people. Today we hear stories that is going on. Uh, nobody knows how tech the story is that even the the, 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 uh, the chairman of the anti graft Commission in Nigeria was also arrested for fraud. Uh, you begin to wonder what is going on. Uh, when I heard it, the first thing that came to my mind was one of the songs that uh, Fela sang many years ago when he said dead body don't get accident. If somebody is investigating corruption, at the end of the day he's been arrested for corruption, then you know that we are living in a mess. This country is in a mess. <laughs> the love for money, the desire for money. Somebody becomes a governor, the treasury becomes his own. Somebody becomes a senator, the constituency resources becomes his own. Somebody becomes a local government chairman, the constituency resources becomes his own. Somebody becomes a pastor, he builds schools, members cannot attend. So you begin to see all kinds of atrocities that is taking place, all because of their love for money. 
the love for money. The other imam that stays in Mowai, Mowai is somewhere in Ugo State, very close to Lagos here. He was telling me about the situation of, I mean, a young man that he knows, he knows the family who took, told his father that he's having issues with someone. <laughs> this boy is about 14 years, going to 15. He told his father he's having issues with somebody and uh, he wants his father to come and intervene. Of course, a loving father, a caring father, I wanted to help the son, really for him to get to the place. And the man looked at him and just sent the boy on an errand. At this house they got to, the, the man, owner of the house told the father, do you know why your son brought you here? He said, no, he told me he's having an issue. Uh, with somebody. That's why I came. I came. I said I should come and assist and beg, please, so I can have mercy on my boy. He said, No, your your son brought you here for rituals. He wants to use you for money ritual. I'm talking about a 14 years old boy on his way to 15. And he said, Just pretend to sleep. When he comes back from where I sent him, you will listen to our conversation. He will think that you are not hearing. And when he came back, he said, Put this man to sleep. He said, talking and talking and talking. Never knew that the father was hearing. He wanted to use his father for rituals. The other day, a 23 years old boy came, he used, came to us, we have a discussion with him, and he told me that he used his mother for rituals. His mother for rituals. It's amazing the society we are living in. The kind of things you hear because of the love for money. The love for money. Except we begin to check it, except we begin to put a check to it, it will get to a stage in Nigeria where things will be totally out of hand. Totally out of hand. When people go for elected offices, go to campaign. They are not campaigning because they want to produce, provide services. They are campaigning because they want to loot the treasury. <laughs> when people want to start churches, it's not because God called them, but because they want to loot the treasury. They love for money. They love for money. That day I traveled to Delta. I, I, we had a program in Sapele. I had a program with the Sapele local government. And we traveled about four, five of us from Lagos traveled to one half program and with the local government uh, chairman then, and the local government in Sapele then. You know, it was when I got to Sapley, I found out that it's what they call Ghana Boga. I was wondering, what do you mean Ghana Boga? We saw a lot of houses, duplexes, big, big houses that were built. Young boys, 23, 22, 24, 25. Heavy, heavy mansions. It was much, much later when we made an inquiry. They said they go to Ghana. These young men go to Ghana and they give them, do some charm, money ritual charm for them. And when they come back, they prepare this charm, put it, it can be in a clothes, it can be in an handkerchief, it's just a clothing material. And when they come back to Nigeria, they give it to their uncle, their father, their brother, their sisters. And once they use it, five days later, the person will die. And they will become extremely rich. So these are the houses of people who use their father, use their mother to make money. That's the society we live now. And the reason why these things are flourishing is because we live in a society where there is no check and balance. You can sleep in blunder and you wake up in wonder. Nobody asks you, where do you get your money from? Nobody asks that question. Some years ago, uh, somebody just came to my house after church, around four or five, and he told me that uh, he's coming from church. I asked him, I said, ah, are you coming to ch from church four or five? Are you not a member of Celestia Church? Because I noticed that the people that stay tonight, when they go in the morning, they stay there tonight. He said, no, uh, it was the ordination. That he was just ordained uh, a deacon in his church. And, and that, uh, I said, you ordained a deacon? Because I know he's involved in four or nine. So I was shocked. When he said he was ordained a dick, he said he bought instrument for the church. I bought I bought them instrument and I donated a huge amount of money and they made me a dickin. They loved my money. That's how crazy the world has become. And this young man I'm talking to you, if you go to his house around six AM you meet him drinking brandy with his guys, his crew, he and his friends. Twenty four hours they are drinking brandy. So you ask yourself, if the pastor is somebody that has common sense, small sense in his brain, if he had visited there or sent somebody to visit this is member that he made a dickin. You will discover that it's a drunk. You will discover that it's a fraudster. Except we begin to go back and begin to look at our values and make up our mind that we want a good society, we are going to end up destroying this nation. Because the street at which we are going now, the love for money. The other day a friend called, somebody called me and said, uh, a, a, a young guy staying with his uncle, they said a knife and, and, uh, with some friends, and they kidnapped the niece. The, the uncle's daughter, uh, about eight years old. This guy, about 18, 19, connived with some people and they kidnapped this eight years old girl. You know, uh, it's amazing. All for money. All for money. That's why we say we want to warn you on this BHF that in as much as God wants you to be blessed, you must be blessed in the wrong way. There are people today who will not live long. 
because they have mortgaged their life. We are living in a generation where we have some young men, a lot of youths now, who have mortgaged their destiny for money. Somebody told me, the guy is even dead now, we were discussing some time ago and told me then that there are places they go for charm. They go to different places. They go to Togo, they go to Ogun State in the you know, they go to Benin Republic. These young men go there and they do charm for them. And they will tell them they won't live more than five years, ten years. In some cases, uh, they will ensure that they, they bring out a chicken that they have not eaten for. Probably they've not they have not fed the chicken for a week or more than that. Sir. And they will throw corn down for this completely battered and hungry looking chicken. It is the number of chicken corn that this chicken eats will determine the number of years that this young man will live. The other day we heard the story of a young man who had a terrible accident. A musician who had a terrible accident and he was gone. These are the things they use sudden wealth. <laughs> they also live suddenly. They have a way of fast forwarding your life. And this young man says, they go to do charms so they can have money and in 10 years time. Maybe they think that 10 years is a very long time. So when they do the charm at 20, they become celebrities in Nigeria because Nigeria will worship money. And that's the biggest problem we have today in our nation. In government, they worship money. In the churches, they worship money. At home, they worship money. In the streets, they worship money. Today, parents don't even ask their children, where did you get the car from? You are not working. You don't have any visible source of income. And you just bought a car. Nobody asks you, where do you get the car from? The church does not ask. The neighbors don't, don't ask. The parents themselves does not ask. I heard to that time that even parents now, they buy laptops for their sons and their daughters to involve in fraud. That's how terrible the system has become. And if we continue like this, we'll get to a, stage, a state in this nation where everything will be completely grounded. Completely grounded. Because the Bible says that the love of money is the root of all evil. People are now using their wives, they are using their husbands, they are using their children, they are using their daughters, all to make money. The other day I was speaking with somebody from a donut, we were discussing, and they told me that the charm they do now, that the young men do now, <coughs> the young, young guys, what they do now in a do state, and also some part of data is spreading around now, is that they go to native doctors, they do charm, and uh, they tell, the native doctors will tell them that they should use this charm while they are sleeping with their girlfriends, and they should take the semen, of the girl and they bring them to bring the cement to them they will use it to do charm for them they will make money but the girl will never take him never no matter who lay hands on him on her never take him except by god's special intervention and there are many cases like this and the boy himself will say well after all i'm not even getting married to the girl so there's no big deal i can use her for money ritual <laughs> she's still alive but something in her in her is completely dead that's how far the world has gone in pursuit of money in pursuit of money. Ritualists everywhere. The other day I watched on the on they showed me on social media of a man who was caught naked and they, and they took his photograph naked in a shrine, doing all kinds of things so he can win election into, into, the, into the House of Assembly. And today our land is even a speaker. That's the society we're living in, where people have to do charm so that they can gain election, so that they can win election. You know, and, and then you know that of course they have no, they have no intention to serve the people. It's all to loot. God says, I've laid before you life and death. Choose one. Choose one. If you want to be rich overnight, if you want to sleep in blunder, and you want to wake up in wonder, I want to assure you that you will not live long. Because the Bible cannot lie. The Bible says that every froster, everyone that is involved in evil to make money will not live long. He said you will die in the midst of his enjoyment, of his enjoying the money, will drop dead. You see people that have strange accidents, they just die. You know, the, the, the Froster had a terrible accident, him, his wife, and his, and his two kids or three kids in the vehicle. Terrible accident. Yes, the wife just gave birth to three months, four months old baby. There was not even a scratch in the body of the baby, but the boy's head fell out of the car. An accident that no scratch in the body of the children, no scratch in the body of the wife, but the head of this man, this young guy, fell off from the vehicle. He used his body to make money. He used himself to make money. What a tragedy. If you are hearing me today and you want to use any part of your body to make money, I just pity you because you are a fool. The Bible, that's what the Bible says. The Bible describes you as a very big fool because at the end of the day, you will end up in shame and you will end up in mockery. The other day, they showed me 
uh, a video, I mean, online, and I watched it, where a young man, tall, handsome man, was busy using the loaf of bread to eat his feces. I don't know how they were able to snap it, he was eating his feces. Then they show a video where he became a, a rich man. You know, so for you to make money, you have to go to the bush and eat your feces so that you can use to make money. That's the wealth that Satan has given to people now. And unfortunately, this generation is after it because everybody's running for money. I told you that time that a 17 year, 14 years old boy around people from Moway wants to use his own father for money. A 21 years old guy was shown on TV, on, on network news, I showed him on the news rather. He wanted to use, he used his mother, he killed his mother and slept with her corpse. It was all over the dailies to make money. So you must understand that the purpose of this our program that we're doing here is to help you. That this way you are choosing is a very dangerous way. God will bless the works of your hand. God wants you to be blessed. But he wants you to be blessed through your talent. He wants you to be blessed through the works of your hand. He wants you to be blessed through doing something. Not using human for money. He wants you to be blessed providing services. Today now we, have, we run a government system where we have thieves everywhere. When you see them fighting in the National Assembly, it's not because they are fighting for the road they want to do. They are not fighting because they want to tie your road, because they want to provide services. They are fighting over the money that they want to share. I told them before, I said, we have two political parties in Nigeria. Two main political parties. The Rich People's Party and the Poor People's Party. It makes no difference where they are, whether they are APC, they are PDP. Fraud and not join them together. Fraud seems to be the biggest religion today. The religion with the highest number of followers is fraud. It has people from the Muslim, it has those from Christians, it has those from idol worshippers, it has those from pastors, imams, it has those from government. If when it comes to fraud, people forget about their religion. Because the religious leaders we have and politicians we have today, they are basically and mainly political religious leaders. They are only interested in religion when it comes to election. When it comes to stealing, that's when they remember that they are Christians, that's when they remember that they are Muslims, not because they want to do anything good for anybody. Billions have been stolen every day, while millions are dying you know, of hunger. Nigeria has become the poverty capital of the world, but the number of fraud and stealing today is amazing. The love for money. We must put an end to it if we want to have a good society. We must begin to ask people where they get the money from. If you as, a mother, you as a mother, your daughter is not working and she brings money for you to you regularly. She gives you money regularly and she's not working. She has no source of income. She has bought a car. She has no source of income. Nothing. There are those now who have even given their daughters out to rich people so they can make money, use them to make money. Uh, it's amazing, the society we are living in. You know, as we begin to round up this program, I, I, I want to please tell you what Jesus said. I will round up with what Jesus said. He said, what shall it profit a man if he gets the whole world and loses his soul? And also, let me also say this, that you are created to provide services. What do you want to be remembered for? As a young boy, focus on providing service. Use your talent to make money. Use your talent to make money. Don't use your life. You're a musician, don't use your life. You're a businessman, don't use your life. We have people who are selling petrol, kerosene. All of a sudden, they became multimillionaires. Because they went into rituals, 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 rituals. But the Bible says, those that live by the sword shall die by the sword. If you have gone the wrong way, come back to God, He will forgive you. Until we meet again and for another episode of living your dreams. God wants you to be rich, but don't be rich through fraud. Don't be rich through foreign eye. Don't be rich through drugs. Don't be rich through stealing from government. Don't be rich through ritual killers. The Lord bless you.